super eager. You've got tons of questions, I'm sure. This is a full packed house. This is amazing. So what we're going to do, we're going to chat Stephen and I a little bit off the top. But we're going to have uh, Gordon and Stefano on the sides there. They're going to have a microphone. So when you have your questions ready, just go and line up and we'll go right to you guys, okay? Okay, hi Stephen. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Fan Expo. So special. It's been, this is my third straight year at Fan Expo. I got to be here in 2012 and watch. Uh, we screened the pilot and came with cast. But uh, I've now seen people for three consecutive years. Yeah. And, um, and, and and just a lot of the people that I've met, uh, it's, it's, this is my home. It's been amazing. Well, we are glad that you are back. Right, everybody? Uh, with my co-host AJ Fry on Interspace, and uh, we were moderating your panel, little plug in there. Uh, and last time we were talking, Tommy had just died, Starling was up in flames, and it's very different now, the end of season two, I mean, Slave is gone, the city's okay. So, so how long, this is the question, how long is that going to last in season three? Uh, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes? <laughs> We actually do make mention of the fact, and it is a big story point in season three, we don't gloss over the fact that there was an earthquake and a siege in consecutive Mays in a major fictional metropolitan place. Uh, and we go over that, and that's actually a big uh, focal point for Brandon Routh's character, Ray Parker. And, uh, excuse me, Ray Parker, did I, did I say that right? Ray Palmer. Ray Palmer. Mm. Yeah. Woo! Sunday. Um, <laughs> That's actually a, a, as a focal point for his character because we talk a lot about the fact that nobody wants to live in Starling City anymore. <laughs> despite the fact that we have criminals on the run at the beginning of season three. Very, very exciting. Well, talking about all the different characters, I mean, every time I go on the internet, there's a new superhero or a new villain that's being attached to season three of Arrow. How exciting is it for you? You know, not only just the, the success of Arrow, but seeing all these really cool, iconic DC characters come to the TV. So, if, I, I feel like everyone is going to know this if you're in this room, and if you're not, you might be in the wrong room. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, we have Ra's al Ghul coming in season three of Arrow. And, and, uh, and the reaction in Hall H at San Diego Comic Con when they heard his name and they saw that introduction in the teaser was the greatest reaction that I have ever heard in my entire life. It wasn't a cheer, it was more like a, oh! <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was really cool. It was like something that you would hear at a sporting event when there's like a huge dunk in traffic or something. Um, yeah, it's, what DC is allowing us to do on, a, on an ongoing basis with the show is incredibly rewarding because we have given them two seasons, the results have been really good, and they're giving us great characters. We were talking backstage about all the new superhero-driven stories that are coming uh, to fall, coming to TV, like Gotham, The Flash, but it was really Arrow that started this for everyone, for, you know, establishing these iconic characters and doing them right. What did Arrow do that was right, that they couldn't get right beforehand? Well. Arrow has been created by people that love comic books. And it was created in coordination and with the full participation of DC. They, we're not trying to make a, a, a TV show. We're trying to make something that's incredibly cinematic. We're trying to make something that's ostensibly a graphic novel. And it's as we've discovered you know, these iconic poses and the canon of the comics and, and bringing that into the show, that it really found its legs. We were very much, for our first nine episodes or so, we were very much an episodic uh, television show, villain of the week, standalone story, and that's because we were trying to find what worked for the show. And now it's heavily serialized, and we embrace the iconic elements. But like you were saying, when I read reviews of Arrow in 2012, it was like, oh, the pilot's good, but as we know, comic book shows don't really work on TV. Right. Sorry, I feel like I'm not facing you guys. Though. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and now, of course, this fall, we have 
we have Gotham, we have The Flash, we have Constantine, we have iZombie. There's, um, what's that show on ABC, Agents? I can't remember. <laughs> But Netflix is doing all the cool stuff with uh, Netflix is doing all the cool stuff with Marvel and uh, and of course it's called Agents of Shield. Agents of Shield. <laughs> and what's the spin-off show that they're doing of that? It's like a mid Agent Carter. That's a really cool idea. I would love instead of doing 23 episodes of Arrow, I'd love to do like 17, and then in the middle of the year we can do six episodes of the Suicide Squad. Yeah. Uh, and then when I can go on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> how busy you are. You recently tweeted, working on the West Coast right now, working on the East Coast this afternoon, searching for a flux capacitor on eBay. That's right. So, just how busy are you, sir? <laughs> we are, and, and not only that, but uh, we're getting ready for a big, uh, our eighth episode this year, and Flash's eighth episode is a big two-night crossover event, which is going to be amazing. The first episode is called, it's, the first episode will be 108 of Flash, it's called Flash vs. Arrow, <laughs> or Arrow vs. Flash, as yeah. the case may be, that sounds better. Uh, <laughs> and uh, episode two is called... <laughs> uh, okay, right. um, but to, to answer your question, sorry, uh, I already shoot 23 episodes of television, and the idea of doing more, whew, I hope everybody enjoys it. <laughs> it's going to be incredibly, incredibly good, yeah, challenging. Well, we thank you so much for your hard work. We just love seeing you on TV. Yeah. But before we throw to the crowd, I definitely have to ask about Arrow uh, and about Oliver and his relationship with Felicity. <laughs> you heard me like, yeah, go for it. So I know you can't say too much, um, but. I would just like to know if there's anything you can tease us about season three, perhaps if there's going to be a kiss, perhaps if there's anything intimate. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know, I need to know. Okay, so I went home on like, sometime this week and I was taking a nap. It's a true story. And I, logged on, and I logged on to my Twitter and I saw an image from episode 301 of Felicity and I, and I immediately thought that the premiere had leaked, and I didn't realize that it was a preview, because the image that was released was like the eighth most important thing that happens in the episode. It's a crazy episode, and, uh, and, and sets the tones for the, for the entire season. But yeah, Oliver and uh, we learn a lot about Oliver and his relationship with Felicity and their feelings or lack thereof for one another in the in the premiere. Why do you think fans are honestly obsessed with this relationship? Like, what do these two bring out in each other that fans are just driven and just attached to? I'm I'm not sure. We like we like working with one another. We have we we are good friends in real life, and we have you know she really blended in well because David and I in the first season we had something that we would call Foundry Fridays. So we'd be in the Arrow Cave, whatever we call it, <laughs> and and we would have like 12 pages of dialogue to get through. Which, putting things in perspective, we do days like that where we jam a bunch of stuff in because every episode is like a finale and we have big things happening in every episode. And if we weren't able to have this one day where we could get through a huge chunk of the episode, then we wouldn't be able to do all the stuff that we do. So, you know, David and I would goof around because it's really the only way that you can get through a day like that. And, you know, when, when, when Emily came in, she just slid into that, into that rhythm that we have. And also, especially in the, in the first, call it the first nine, 10 episodes of the show, Boy, Oliver was a dick, wasn't he? He was, just, he was just part of my language. He was just so sour, and he never smiled, and so it was a really nice reprieve, both you know, for the character and for me personally, to go and shoot these quick scenes with Emily where I would laugh at her, yeah. and, and she would be really awkward, and it was such a change of pace for the show um, that I think everything grew from there. 
Yes, and I'm, it's quite lovely right now because we are shooting episode 305, which is titled The Secret Origin of Felicity Smoke. Yay! And, and I have four out of eight days off. Unprecedented. Unprecedented. And honestly, I will say that Charlotte Ross, who is playing Felicity's mother, is... We shot a scene on Monday morning, and it is the most fun. And we had so much fun that I was legitimately worried that the producers would be like, this is too much fun, you guys have to reshoot this. Yeah. <laughs> so exciting. Okay, guys, I know we have, whoa, the lineups are huge. Okay, let's go to Gordon first. Oh, there they are. Oh, okay. okay, that's what's happening. Oh, yeah. I see what's happening now. Hi. Right over here. I think I speak for everyone in the crowd when we say we couldn't have chosen a better arrow ourselves. Oh, thank you. I'm sure that in season one, you do that really intense chin up where you're kind of jumping through the bottom. That's right. How many takes did it take you to get that right? And how long did you have to kind of like work out for that to be able to so, so I had. In my apartment in Hollywood, before I got the show, I had a chin-up bar because I didn't have a gym membership, so I had a chin-up bar. And, and I would do chin-ups all the time. All this exercise is, is really being able to dominate the chin-up so that when you shoot yourself up, there's a moment of weightlessness, and then you take the bar to the next level. Um, and I was training in a spot called Tempest Rerunning Academy, and that's where people train for American Ninja Warriors, so they had the salmon ladder there. And David Nutter, the director of pilot, director of pilot of the Flash, asked me if I could do it. Like, uh, probably. And <laughs> and and and, uh, and then they built it. But the day that we actually shot it, one of the things about a pilot is once you go to series, you build sets. But for the pilot, the Arrow Cave was an actual cave, and it was zero degrees Celsius in there. And so in that sequence, when you see steam coming off of my body, that's not CGI. That's steam because it was that cold. It, it, didn't, take, it, didn't, take, uh, it didn't take that many takes. Subsequently, you know, we have tried to add dialogue when I'm doing the sand ladder, or we've, or we've like, in last, last year, episode 15, when we shot the big flashback, and we see me starting to like, do chin-ups and maybe some muscle-ups. Our director for that episode, Glenn Winter, is absolutely famous for not understanding at all how physically demanding things are. <laughs> uh, uh, do it again, Glenn! I can't! So when you see me struggle with a muscle-up in that episode, that's because he had me do it like nine times. <laughs> and because it works for the character. <laughs> Thank you. Great master plan. Uh, okay, over to the right. Hi, Stephen. Hey, man. First of all, I want to say uh, thank you for coming. Um, second, I just have one question. Uh, could you, uh, my name's Abdullah, could you say uh, that I failed the city? <laughs> iconic element, well it became an integral element, iconic is a little bit of a, a heavy word right there, uh, it became an integral element for the show in season one, and then we stopped saying it in season two, and people would come up and say, why aren't you saying it anymore? And I went to the producers and I said, why aren't we saying it anymore? And they said, well, we, we, we always thought of that as a season one thing. And I said, really? <laughs> And here it is, it's back. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, back over there. Hi, hi Stephen, how are you? Hey, I'm great, how are you doing? I'm great. Uh, I was wondering, what do you do to keep in shape, like, with your exercise routine? Maybe I can copy like that. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Well, you know, part of, it is, part of it is working 14 hour days. You know, that, that, that does it. I'd say that 80% of 
90% of any healthy lifestyle uh, falls between diet and just a good mental state. Being happy, being comfortable, not being um, unreasonable with what you demand from yourself so that you don't then reflexively disappoint yourself. Um, and then after that, just, just do exercise that you find fun. Like, you know, when I was in California, I would hike all the time. I didn't have a gym membership. Now I have to have a gym membership because I'm, it's like I'm lugging around a weight vest of muscle at this point. <laughs> and I, I, I'd be like 20 pounds lighter if I had my, if I had my, uh, you know, if, if I wasn't doing arrow, I think. Um, but, you know, I, I do yoga now. Like power yoga, hot yoga, it's really fun. And, and God bless Lululemon and the outfits that they make for women. I feel like something's gotta be wrong when you're in a yoga class and you just immediately feel like a pervert all the time. Yeah. But just, yeah, good luck with it, with, with whatever you do. Thank you. You must have a cheat day. Like where you eat whatever you want. No. No! no. I'll tell you what I do. Um, I, I run. Running is the great equalizer. Because once you run for over an hour, you can do whatever the hell you want for the rest of the day. And not care. Okay. Yeah. I did, by the way, when I was in Toronto, I did three marathons here. I only did the marathons for the eating afterwards. <laughs> You think I'm kidding, I'm not kidding. I usually eat and then go running after. Right, so right, right, right. I'm doing this wrong. You're okay. doing it wrong. Yeah. Okay, back over there. Hi, Steven. My name's Brina. Hey, Brina. Um, hey. <laughs> um, so, out of the stunts that are on the show and the ones that you've done, which one was the hardest for you? Which one was the hardest? The fight in the pilot was the hardest because of the because of the pressure. You know, that was the first time that I really engaged someone wearing the Arrow costume. And our feeling was, if you don't buy this fight, why are you gonna buy the show? You know that, you know that expression, you never get a second chance to make a first impression? This, this was, we wouldn't you know, have had a second episode if this fight wasn't good. And, you know, on the show now, I'm much, better and quicker at learning choreography for fighting on screen. Um, this was all new to me. I had never fought on screen. I mean, I, I had murdered someone, but I had never fought <laughs> on screen. And, you know, and they had me do that entire fight. Um, and, uh, it, you know, I, I wish that... I wish that I was in charge of the DVD and the Blu-ray of the show, because the stuff that I would include would be after the take, you know, when you see me run off at the end of the fight, if you if they had just let the cameras roll a little bit, you would have heard me go, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I wish stuff like that was on the TV. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that was, that was the toughest fight. You're welcome. Uh, because your fight scenes are so intense, at the beginning when you first started Arrow, were there ever moments where you'd get out of character because you were just so into fighting or you'd forget some lines or was it, was it actually easier than you thought to combine like keeping your character with all the fight scenes? I, I am always very present in the fight scenes because the most important thing for fighting um, is that you fight with the same intent that you say a line. Like if I say, if I say, if I'm supposed to tell someone I love them on the show, I don't say I love them. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I put purpose and meaning behind it. And if you're supposed to punch someone in the face, then you want to punch them in the face with, 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 with your whole heart. <laughs> You know, the whole theme. And so it's very important. I always stay very present because I always want to remember that there is an intention behind every move. Whether it's defensive, offensive, a little bit of both. Yeah. Um, I always try to stay present. Alright, back over there. Uh, hi, Stephen. Uh, my name is Lee McClellan. Uh, you and I have actually already met. Uh, in 2012, I was at the screening of the career episode. Uh, you signed an autograph for me. Cool. But, yeah, I'm sure you remember me. Uh, you <laughs> Get up from Back to the Future, and you like seems like that. I love Back to the Future, my friends. Yeah, and you know what? I actually do have a hoverboard and a flux capacitor, so if you like, we can talk about it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, but, uh, 
Okay, no, actually, uh, my question is, um, so DCWB seemed to finally be bringing the Justice League to the big screen. Um, I was wondering, to your knowledge, is there any plans on bringing you and your character in that? And if not, would that be something you'd be interested in participating in? Um, we are creating a Justice League on TV for us. And, you know, and it is... Thanks, man. And... Uh, and I, and I, I don't think that I don't think that there is a logistical reality to us participating on, in the feature side of, of the business. Um, that being said, you know I, I never wanted to have to feel like the show was justified just because we participated in the movies. Um, so I, I don't my, I don't think that my character will participate on the cinematic side. But um, what's that saying? Is it, is it six seasons in a movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know, on our show right now, we have, uh, we, there's me, there's uh, Arsenal, spoiler, there's uh, Flash, <laughs> there's gonna be Firestorm, there's the Inklings of the Atom, there is, I mean, you know, the, 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 the Justice League and elements of it are very present on our shows already. Nice shirt. <laughs> <laughs>